The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, while I recovered weak and weary from any an injury and surgery most exceeding sore. <clears throat> While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping upon my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor,' I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. But narcotics still beguiling all my fancy into smiling. Straight I wheeled a cushion seat in front of bed and closet door. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from unseen censer, swung by who knows who, whose footfalls disturbed the tufted floor. I unbolted the door. Sir, or madam, said I, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came a-rapping, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Hmm. Back into the chamber turning, all my nose within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Let's try that again. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. You again? Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. How'd you get up there? Perched and sat, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, t'was after my bleak dismember, and each severed dead dismembered member wrought its ghost upon the floor. Ouch! Ah, not my phantom foot again. <sighs> Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my book's surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost pediform, for that rare and radiant limb whom the doctors named Valinor. Actually, his name was Lefty. Lefty does not rhyme with Lenore. Naming an amputated limb Valinor is kind of lame. Fine, your foot is nameless here forevermore. Then the ebony sock beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though they toast be shorn and shaven, thou, said he, art sure no craven. Think so, ghastly grim and ancient maven, whom I can surely not ignore. Tell me what thy lordly name is, which I wish you had disclosed afore. Quoth the nubbin. Nevermore. You're in league with the narrator. I heard that. Much I marveled this ungainly limb to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being than I ever yet could love a lost appendage more. Chopped off this unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster. I'm a slow runner. Till dark songs of only one leg more. Till the dirges of my hope, that melancholy burden sore of never, never. Never more? But the stumpy sitting lonely on the placid bed spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a googly eye he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered. Other limbs I have chopped before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my soul hath flown before. Then said he, Nevermore. Does that mean you're sticking around longer than lefty, or is that just the only word you know? Nevermore. I thought so. Now I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to that foul stump whose fiery eyes now burned into my dead foot's core. Tell this soul with sorrow laden, if before end of creation it shall grasp out a blessed transformation and make my leg whole once more. Clasp a rare and radiant transformation to be united. Evermore, quoth the nubbin. Nevermore. Be 
that word I sign, party victor fiend. I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and amputation's footless shore. Leave no black thread as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit now and get out that door. Quoth the nubbin. Nevermore. Puppet. Said I, theme of evil puppet, still of sucker devil. You grim, ungainly, ghastly stump of that in lefty's death doth revel. Desolate yet undaunted, your unraveling is sorely wanted. In this home by horror, haunted. Oh, ah, ah. Tell me, truly, I implore, is there Tylenol nearby? Tell me, truly, I implore. Don't say it. If he made one more dark utterance, I'd give him a stern comeuppance. Nevermore. That's it. <laughs> the sock puppet will be taunting. Nevermore. And the cripple never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, and sitting. I do a lot of sitting. With the pallid face and broken nose, oh so sore. I see puppet eyes with all the gleaming of a demon that is dreaming. So with lamplight o'er him streaming, I cast his yarn upon the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that flies floating above the floor shall be lifted. Nevermore. A special thank you to my patrons, Luke Miller, Lisa Chaffont, Howard Cleaver, and 157443310. Your contributions paid for the googly eyes. Mwahaha. <laughs>